right. Okay. Yay. Happy, happy Tuesday. Glad to see everybody today. My name is Wendy Lee from creativelyyours.com. And we are here to do a little, oh, I did it again. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I can stop it. There we go. I got it before it made all kinds of noise. So when I pull up YouTube, I keep forgetting that it opens another window when I stream to YouTube and it turns the sound on for some reason. I don't want the sound on. You guys don't want to hear me duplicate myself. It's terrible. Anyway, glad that you're here today joining me for a little bit of crafty fun in the studio. So Yes, let's go ahead and get started. I do have a sneak peek behind me. You may have seen those before. Those are um, part of my first presentation for our Makers Mojo event this weekend. I can't wait. We start on Friday with our kickoff event, and we've got, got a couple of presentations on Friday, and then we're going to do the rest of our day on Saturday. So we have 10 different presentations, a special guest. It's going to be so much fun. So if you've not joined us before, there is still time, or if you've joined us before, there's still time if you're not registered. You have until Thursday this week to sign up and get registered and join us in the group. Uh, as long as you register by the 28th, you're still eligible for door prizes. Um, some of the play along posts are already done, but you can still participate. So, all right, let's jump over, switch the screen, and we will start our crafty project today. All right, here's what I have for you. So you guys know it's celebration time. And um, so that means with every $50 that you purchase from me, you would get a free celebration item. So I'm using some celebration items. So we're gonna make this adorable. I think it's adorable, little treat box, cute. It is perfect to hold a couple of like square flat candies. So like a Ghirardari square, or I'm gonna be using these little Dunkin' Donut coffee thins and put those in there. So my thinking here was kicking off Christmas in July this last week. So um, this could easily be a super cute stocking stuffer. You could leave it um, for coworkers. Um, you could stick it in a, a lunchbox, right, to give to a friend or a, uh, one of your kids or your husband um, or your wife, whatever, your significant other. Um, but I just thought it was a fun thing. And while this one, this particular one could be all occasions, like you could use this any time of the year, right? Um, but I was thinking more Christmas in July. And so the belly band slides off. And so your cute, super cute camper will stay with the belly band. And then your box will open and reveal your chocolates inside, which mine aren't in there because I pulled them out so I can make the new box, right? <laughs> so we've got that. Cute. I love it. And then you can reuse this box because it's not uh, adhered permanently closed that you've got to tear it to use it, right? So we're featuring a couple different celebration products on this one today. So my favorite, or one of my very favorites, is the Tree Lot dies. So that's this die set here. There are so many fabulous pieces in this die set. Um, and today we're working with the camper. This one coordinates with the Trees for Sale stamp set. Now we're not using this one today, we will later in the week. So if you jump over to my Instagram, you can find me on Instagram, SU Wendy Lee on social media. You can find me anywhere on social media under that. Um, but you can search Creatively Yours and find me as well. But if you're not a follower of my Instagram, I will be doing a couple, well, at least three, maybe four tutorials this week, um, creating other projects with these dies. And we'll pull in the trees for sale stamp set as well. I'll show you a sneak peek of those projects so you can see them. The other thing we um, I brought in for today's project is the silver and gold designer paper pack. So this pack comes with the polka dot and the stripe in both silver and gold, multiple sheets. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's got that metallic edge on it. This paper is so much fun. You can add color to it or use it as it is. I'm gonna use it as it is today. Um, and we'll, we'll go from there. Good, good, good. So glad to see you guys today. I did turn on my volume, didn't I? I did, good, 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 good. All right. So let's go ahead and jump in with today's project. I'm going to bring in my Simply Scored to start off with. Now, if you don't have a Simply Scored, you could use your paper trimmer if you prefer. 
I like when I'm doing boxes and things with multiple score lines to go ahead and pull out my Simply Scored and set it up. I make fewer mistakes this way when I am working, right? So, all right, so I'm gonna score and I will put the complete supply list with links. You can shop right in my store, click the link, it'll take you right in, get the products that you need to order. Um, and then you can also, um, I'll also have the complete cut dimensions so that you can make this project on your own at home as well. Okay, so my card base here is three and five eighths by seven and three quarters. And we're gonna score on this long end and I'm doing two and a half, three and one eighth, double check myself, five and five eighths, and six and one quarter, okay? And then I'm gonna rotate this and I'm gonna score it at five eighths and three. Or you could do five eighths and then rotate it and do five eighths again. It's entirely up to you, it's the same difference, right? I sometimes will rotate it, whoops, and do it that way versus um, doing the opposite measurement just because sometimes I, I wanna make sure it's super even on both sides and I can kind of slide it off. So that's the scoring, super easy, right? All righty. So I don't know if I mentioned, so the tree lot dies are free with a purchase during celebration. Um, that one is a level two, so it takes a hundred dollar purchase to earn that one. But oh my gosh, it is jam packed full of awesomeness. Now this silver and gold paper is a level one, so it's free with a fifty dollar purchase. Nice. So when you spend $150 with me during celebration, so that's July 1st through August 31st, you will um, earn a spot to my celebration celebration. So this is an event that I hold. It's basically a free card class for my customers that support me during celebration. And it's just a little reward, a little thank you. So I send them a little goodie bag card kit in the mail and we get on Zoom and we do some paper crafting together. It's lots and lots of fun, fun day. And we're gonna have that day in September 17th. So if you can't join me live, um, you know, you'll, there'll be a recording in there that, you know, I write the tutorial up and all that. All right, so this narrower end is gonna be the top of my box flap. And then this is gonna be my box front, I guess you could say, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this. So when I clip these little tabs here, so I'm going to go straight in on these tabs. So let's go ahead and do both sides. We'll go ahead and do this one as well. All right, now I want to angle cut or what we call miter cut these little tabs. So let me kind of push this paper back so it's out of my way and hopefully you can see this. Let's see if I can get it a little closer to the camera. And hopefully the focus is okay. It looks a little blurry. If it's blurry on your end, let me know. And I'll see if I can do something with the focus. But I'm going to angle cut these little tabs here. This just makes it a little easier when folding. It's not going to fight me. Okay. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we'll just fold those sides back in. Clip that little tab. Okay. And one more here. Perfect. Now, on my box, I decided to cut away these two tabs as well for the lid. It just made it a little easier to slide down in. So I'm just gonna cut that straight. Oh, I might need to set that a little bit deeper. There we go. I did not wanna let go. And then we'll do this other tab as well. And then I'll lay this down so you can see the whole thing. Just kind of scooch my trash over, <laughs> right? So. This was the narrow end, this is the wider end, and so this is my box base right here. Cool? Make sense? Hopefully you're following along with me. All right, I'm gonna flip this over to the back side because when I close my box, I'm gonna see this flap and this flap. So I'm just gonna flip this over. Now on my original, I've got the polka dot at the top and the stripe at the bottom, but I'm gonna swap that today. We're gonna put the polka dot at the bottom. There we go and the stripe at the top. And there is a gap there. That's intentional. Kind of a little design element, right? So go ahead and put our adhesive 
and get these layers down right on the front here. Got a nice skinny layer. I love skinny layers. So much fun. Uh, I got little bits of paper hanging off the edge there. All right, so I want this up towards the fold and centered left to right best that I can. And I'll leave that little gap there. Cute? All right, so now we can go ahead and assemble our box. Now, if you prefer, you can use tear and tape. I'm not going to do that, um, but you could use tear and tape if you want to. I'm just gonna use a little bit of liquid glue. So let me give this another really good crease because I want these two to be in. And these, this will take a moment to dry and set. All right, perfect. Liquid glue. Liquid glue and I don't always get together, get along together, I guess you could say. And we do want a little glue on that tab. I'm not going to put too much because I don't want it to go crazy. I don't want it to ooze. This is where I don't love liquid glue because it oozes. All right. So I'm just going to fold this up. And I'll hold that square. And then I'm going to use my bone folder. Try to push that out. It does not want to do it. I'm going to have to use my fingers. And I'm going to get all sticky. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I'll survive it, but I don't like it. <laughs> Sorry, keep pulling towards me. When you make boxes, do you pull them towards you? Now, do you guys like little treat boxes? Do you do little stocking stuffers? Or do little surprise treats? Leave them on your coworker's desk. They'll love you for that. Surprise your, your spouse, significant other. Cute, right? And so that just needs to set up and dry. But we've got the little tabs we can slide down in. But you can put two nice little chocolates. Like I said, flat chocolates. It doesn't have to be chocolate, but a flat candy. Two fit in there really nicely. You know what? I'm going to shorten those tabs a little bit. They don't need to be that long, and they're kind of fighting me a little bit. So I'm going to cut them about in half. I just want a little bit to kind of hold that box down closed. But, you know, you don't have to have them. And I can tuck that little flap of that candy back in. Oh, it's fighting me still. There we go. Got it in. And then you'll just fold that flap down. And then the belly band is what's going to hold that closed. But I love that you'll be able to um, reuse this box, right? Super cute. All right, we'll slide that over. Let's go ahead and work on the belly band next. So you could pre-score the belly band. I'm not going to. I like to dry fit it on. And I'm going to put my, my, my seam, I guess you could say, in the front because I want it to fall underneath my focal point here so I can hide that seam so that it's nice and pretty all the way around. So I kind of want it to fall right in this area. So I'm just going to fold it and give a little pinch. Fold it, give a little pinch. Come down here, another little pinch. And here, one more pinch. Okay. Now, I'm trying not to fold it too terribly tight around it because I want to be able to slide it off and on. So I'm going to go ahead and pick one of these little pinches that I did here. And we're going to make sure this is straight and get that a good crease. And then the um, other opposite end, I want this to be able to fold flat as well. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a crease. So that was on two of my pinch lines, right, that allowed it to lay flat. I can go ahead and put a little adhesive on this end and a little adhesive on this end because these are gonna go on top of each other. So I did the inside of one and the outside of the other. I'm gonna lay them down on top of each other and that's gonna adhere that closed. So now I can just kind of pivot that and give it another good crease. I'll square all that up. Now, I did cut a little crooked, as you can see, I've got um, my piece is just a little bit wider. So I can just take my paper snips and trim away that excess. So I was a little crooked when I cut that. It was a scrap out of my bin and I didn't check it. I wanted to use what I had, which is fine. No worries, right? 
All right, perfect. So now I've got my little belly band and it should fit. We'll find out here in just a moment, right? So we're gonna slide this on our box. It might've got a little bit tight, but we'll see. I don't know, I think it's fine. I just gotta get my hands working. Having a little arthritis trouble today. Oh, I did get it tight. There we go. I got a little tighter than I would have wanted, actually. It's nice and snug for sure. All right, so next, I'm gonna tie my ribbon around this. Now, I did make a mistake here. Look at that, I put the longer side on top and I really should have put the longer side on bottom so that my seam ended up further down here. But this is gonna be okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be happy with it in the end anyway. So I'm gonna take this off, I'm gonna flip it over, I'm gonna put it at the bottom just so it's not as noticeable. The circle should cover most of it. However, just in case it doesn't, I'd rather have that at the bottom than the top. So I actually folded it backwards. We all do that kind of stuff, right? All right, so I'm gonna wrap about um, 18 inches or so of pool party sheer ribbon. I love this ribbon. You could leave it pool party or you could color it with your stamp and blends if you want and change the color. It works really nicely since it's such a light color. All right, so I'm gonna tie this in a bow just right on top. And again, my fingers are having arthritis trouble today, so we'll see how this goes. Some days are not easy crafting days, right? All right, hold nice and tight. Oh, I'm happy with that already. Now, if you're not happy with your bow, hold the knot, pull the tails to make the loops a little bit smaller. You hold the knot so that you don't lose what you've tied here, right? It doesn't totally loosen it. And then you can kind of play with it and retighten your bow and make it the size that you want it, mess around with it until you're happy with it. Um, I'm going to go a little bigger on my bow and then I'm going to leave it alone. I kind of like this extra length, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a nice finished edge. So the good thing about this one is that they don't have to tie and untie this. Once this is on this belly band, you're going to secure it so that they won't ever have to untie this. They'll just be able to slide the belly band on and off and be good. All right, so next, let's go ahead and do our decorations. So I've got my layering circles dies. And let's see which one I did. I think I did the fourth largest, yes. So the fourth largest circle. So one, two, three, and four. So it's that one right there. I've gone ahead and die cut a circle out of creme cake cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the front here. You could do it flat. I'm actually going to pop it up and look, I'm really close to where I overlapped that seam down there. So I'm going to be okay, but you know, still better for it to have it at the bottom. Let me go ahead and add some dimensionals. And I know this seems strange, but I'm going to go either side of this little ribbon here. I want to make sure I'm going to be able to cover all of those. Yep. I want to, I want to snag that ribbon down so that it's not going to move on me. So that's why I kind of went back and forth. And then this should make it nice and stable to hold this circle on. You could do more, but I think that's plenty. Right. I'm going maybe a little lower than I might have before because of where I put my seam. But it covers pretty good, right? I like it. All right. So this would be super cute, just like this, add a little sentiment, send it on its way. But why not add the adorable, adorable little camper? So let's pull out these dice. I can show you all the pieces I cut and then we can um, assemble this. So you've got a camper. I cut that in the white and I used this piece here, okay? So that's just in basic white cardstock. I've got a little piece of vellum. So we're gonna make this the window Give it a little frosted window. Isn't that fun? I love that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put that down. Why not? Let's put a little liquid glue on here. And we'll go ahead and adhere this. Now, if this sticks out a little too far and you see it on the outside, you just snip away what you don't need. So this is about two inches by three quarters, if I remember right. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the back, right? Because you're going to cover that up anyway. So got our super cute camper with a little frosted window. Then I took some black 
and I recut this. So I, I've got a little black and then I just cut straight up to get the tire. And then I've got a piece of silver foil. You can see here, I put some backing paper on it, adhesive sheet, and I'm gonna clip this off. So I use that same die to cut that little silver hitch. And when I cut that, I got this little window. So that's the little window right there, also in silver. And you'll see what I'm gonna do with that in just a moment, okay? So let's go ahead and adhere this down. So we'll use a little liquid glue here. It looks like I cut off my tire on my, um, my little camper here, but it's okay, because I'm gonna cover it with the black. So it's not a big deal that it cut off a little bit. I just need enough to adhere this in place. So the nice thing is this has a little score line, the detail line that it gave it as it went. So that's cute, 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 cute. And then we'll put this little tire center on. It's our little hubcap, right? I think that's the hubcap. <clears throat> All right, see if I can get this on. This was not the day to pick a tedious project. Whoops. A project with little tedious pieces when my hands are not working, right? <laughs> okay. Let me get my take your pick. Oh, good. You guys are liking this. You love little boxes. Good, good, good. I know. I love the little curtain die. And I'll tell you, that's so little. Let me pull it out. I'll use it later this week on Instagram. But um, it's such a little cute die. And it just fits right here in the window. So it works perfect when you use vellum or cardstock to cover that. Then you can just lay that right down in there. I've even seen where people have taken this cute little die and made ice skates for the little hippo. How cute is that? Love it, love it, love it. All right, so I put backing paper on this. Now you might see that it says Sizzix on the back. I had um, some scrap of some old that I had already on the sheet. So I just left it. It's okay, you use what you've got. But I find putting adhesive sheets on the back of these little small pieces like this is so much easier than trying to use my liquid glue and put it together. You, you, know, you guys know I have issues with that anyway. <laughs> so liquid glue and I don't always get along. All right, next, this piece here. It took me forever to figure out that this die is what cuts these two pieces. So now we can put some little trim right on our camber. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Let's go ahead and use a little liquid glue on this as well. I found that liquid glue was the easiest, I know, to put these little pieces together. Right there, I'm gonna do some on the top. All right, yeah, all the little detail dice that are in this set is, they're just so much fun. You guys know I love the little hippo one and all the little dies in that one as well. But the camper one, also very, very cool. So they're both awesome, both items that you might want. I'm glad I got them for sure. All right, my camper's coming along great. I love it. All right, so we're done with that die. Move that out of the way. Next, I've got a adorable banner. Right? So if we're going to use this for um, a celebration, we want a little banner. So this is cut out of real red cardstock with this die here. And again, I put an adhesive sheet on the back just because I thought it would um, be much easier to adhere down in place. So we'll take that off the back. Mix in a nice peel and stick. And just lay this right down where I want it. So fun, so fun. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop this up right on the front of my box. So stinking cute. Now, you just need to be careful when, because we used vellum, you're gonna see through the vellum if you put adhesive there. So you wanna try to place your adhesive so they don't fall across the vellum, right? Now, I also like to kind of grab that little edge just to, you know, just in case something weird happens with my glue and I lose my adhesion, if I can. And you know what? I think I'm going to use an edge because it gets a little skinny up there. 
on this top part, just to make sure I don't get too close to that window. All right, so I'm a little excessive on my dimensionals, but I don't care. And hopefully I didn't get them too close to the outer edge because my camper is a little bit bigger than my circle. And I don't want this to stick to the back of that thing, right? So cute. I love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, let's add our finishing touch. So when I cut out this camper, you know, we use the circle for the uh, hubcap here, cut it in different color, but there's this little window that came right out of there. I'm gonna use that for my sentiment. So I got all my pieces fast and easy right off there. And instead of using the coordinating stamp set, I decided to pull in the best butterflies and I wanted this little hay right there. So we're gonna pull in our real red ink. stamp. Yeah, so you guys feel comfortable making little treat boxes, not comfortable making treat boxes? I'd love to hear. All right, so I want to pop that up on the front as well. Again, I'm going to grab just an edge off of my dimensionals here. I, want, I like that long skinny edge and I'll put that along the top actually of this sentiment, if I get a hold of it. Yeah, make sure I know what's the top. This is my top, so I'm gonna switch that around. I only want the dimensional on the top because of where I'm gonna place it. So it's gonna be hanging off the bottom of my camera a little bit here. Is that about right there? Cute, so stinking cute. Now you could add some bling to it if you wanted to. I didn't feel like it needed it on this particular project. I think it's just fun and cute as it is. So now we've got our finished little treat box. Cute. So this one had it, let me close this one up as well. See if I can get my fingers to work. We'll slide our belly band on so you can see the difference between the two. Yeah, I did much better making this one looser. So you've got the polka dots up top with the stripe at the bottom or the stripe up top with the polka dots on the bottom. I like them both. I think they're both fun. So it'd be a good way to be able to use up um, your various prints in your paper. You could do it in gold, you could do it in silver. I think both would look fantastic. Now you could change this up. If the camper wasn't your thing, you could pull in um, some of the other elements in here or you could add them to the camper, right? So we've got trees, We've got um, this little sign, which cuts out the trees for sale image. You've got a little puppy dog. Um, you know, there's just all kinds of little bow, the wreath. You could add the curtain to the, um, to the camper if you wanted to. Lots of different things that you can do with these dies, right? I love this. This is a string of lights um, that goes along with the stamp. Super cute, right? Love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, so you wanna see the cards I'm gonna show this week as well. So these I'm gonna show tutorials on my Instagram channel. So um, I've got this beautiful card here. So we're getting ready for Christmas, right? We're gearing up for Christmas early. And then I've got this one, love it. And then um, the little cluster of trees, fun. And then I may do a quick home decor as well. It depends on if I get, get my act together and get it all designed and, and ready to go. So we'll see. But I wanted to um, have a few projects showing, focusing on the tree lot dies, of course, but pulling in some of the other coordinating products so you can kind of see how those play together and hopefully give you some inspiration I know with the heat, it's a little hard to think Christmas in July, but this is a great time to at least start planning your holiday projects so that you're not overwhelmed and stressed out during the holiday season. If you can start things earlier, get your plan in place, enjoy your crafting experience, then maybe it will take a little stress off of you for the holiday season. All right, perfect. Good, love it, love it, love it. I'm glad you guys joined me today. If you, um, if I didn't answer some of your questions, be sure to leave them in the comments after the video um, is done. I also appreciate you sharing with your crafty friends. And if you're not already following my channel, go ahead and follow my channel. I appreciate that as well. Every little bit helps get my name out there.
and I appreciate all of you for joining me. Thanks so much and have a happy Tuesday, a wonderful week, and I will catch you all again next Tuesday for some more crafty fun. Yay! All right, thanks and bye for now. <laughs>